Alright, so we've got 5, 5, which is quadratic equations. So let's get started with this. Alright, what we're going to learn, we're going to learn to solve quadratic equations by factoring. So that was last chapter, factoring. And also by finding square roots. And then sometimes things don't factor, so our backup plan is we can always graph things on our graphing calculator. And we'll be able to solve that way. So, three new vocabulary phrases for today. Standard form of a quadratic equation, the zero product property, and the zero of a function. All right, so skills checks we'll need. We got a factor. I'll do one, you do two and three. Number one, what multiplies to 14 and adds, uh, <coughs> I'm sorry, multiplies to negative 14, not positive 14, and then adds to five. And so on this one, we could go seven and two where the 7 is a positive and the 2 is a negative. 2 times 7 is 14, 2 times, or 7 times negative 2 is negative 14. All right, and then we also need to graph. We've done this before. Let's find our vertex first. So we've got negative b over 2a for our x value, which is negative negative 2 over 2 times 1, which is 2 over 2 which is just 1. So we've got 1, comma, and then the y value is we plug that number back into our function to find our vertex. So let's plug it back in. 1 squared minus 2 times 1 minus 5. So we've got 1 minus 2 minus 5 is negative 1 minus 5 is negative 6. So 1, negative 6 will be our vertex. And we know that we're going to cross that negative 5, 0, 5, because that's our C. Our vertex was 1, negative 6. So that must mean our third dot is going to be 2, 5 because of symmetry. There we go. We've got ourselves a parabola. You see if you can do 5 and 6. All right, solving by factoring and finding square roots. So we have our standard form, right? We have A, B, and C. And so when we factor this, okay, when we get them factored here, then each term, x plus 3, could be equal to 0, and x minus 7 could also be equal to 0. Because remember, 0 times anything equals 0. So we get to set each term equal to 0. So let's solve this all the way through by factoring. So we need to get 0 on one side. So we're going to add the 15. Now we're going to factor it. So we know we have a 2x and we know we have an x. All right, factors of 15, one of them is going to get times by 2 and we got to get ourselves to 11. So we're going to have 2 times 3, which is 6, and 1 times 5 is 5. 6 and 5 gets us to 11. They're both negative, and that equals 0. So now let's finish this. We get to say 2x minus 5 equals 0, and x minus 3 equals 0. Both parentheses equal 0. So 2x equals 5, and x equals 2.5. x equals Three. Two answers on this one that are going to make your solution work. All right, so see if you can do this for A, B, and C. All right, now we actually get the easier one second. You'll notice here that if we don't have B, B equals 0, we just have an x squared number, we can move the 180 to the other side. We can divide by 5. And let's see, what is that? That's going to be 36. And then we can take our square root of both sides, and we get straight to our answer. Don't make the mistake of just saying 6. Remember, it's 6 or negative 6. Remember that square roots can have a plus or a minus on them. So we can also write it like this. x equals plus or minus 6. That means the exact same thing. All right, so see if you can use your square root skills to get A, B, and C for understanding check number two.
All right, let's take a look at a real-world connection here. Smoke jumpers are in free fall from the time they jump out of a plane until they open their parachutes. And the function y equals negative 16 t squared plus 1600 models the jumper's height y in feet at t seconds for a jump from 1600 feet. How long is a jumper in free fall if the parachute opens at 1,000 feet? All right, so let's take a look at this. We've got our equation, y equals negative 16 t squared plus 1600. And we want to figure out how long to get to 1,000 feet. We'll put 1,000 in for y. And now we need to get all of the t squared on one side and the numbers on the other. So we'll minus 1,600. And we're allowed to do this because there's no t. There's only t squared. So minus 600 equals negative 16 t squared. Let's divide both sides by negative 16. And so 600 divided by negative 16. Let's see what we get here. Thirty-seven point five e equals t squared, and so how do we get an answer? We're going to square root it, and so thirty-seven point five square root of that caret point five. Remember, point five is the same as square root. Six point one two uh, seconds. Six point one two seconds. Now, technically, it's plus or minus 6.12, but does it make sense to have a negative time for our answer? No, it doesn't. We want to be after we jump. So we'll only use the positive answer for this question. All right, so see if you can use the same thinking for 3a and b. OK, so sometimes we're not going to be able to factor cleanly, and we're going to have to use some other methods. So the first method we'll use here is using our graphing calculators. So. Solve by graphing. So let's look at this. There's no way to factor this because the factors of 2 are just 1 and 2. 1 and 1 for the x. There's no way to add those together to get to 5. Can't do it. So what we need to do instead is we need to put this in our graphing calculator. Move this over so we can see it. So let me walk through the steps. y equals, to get to our equation screen, x squared minus 5x plus 2. Now we have our equation. I'm going to go to my window, make sure my window is decent. I like to always start with negative 10 to 10 and negative 10 to 10 for my y min, y max, x min, x max. Let's go ahead and graph it and see what happens here. All right, so we're trying to solve this. We're trying to figure out when all of this equals 0. That's when the y equals 0. So we're trying to find right here and right here, where does it cross? All right, and the way we can do that is we can do a calculation. So the calculator can do this for us. Second, right here, calc. We're going to want to try to find a zero. Where are we crossing? And here's how it works. Left bound. So we need to see the flashing cursor. Hit enter a little bit to the left of what we think. So it's already right there. Right bound. So now I need to move over a little bit to the right of where I think it crosses. And now my guess. I'm going to go right on, close as I can, to where I think it crosses. And so there's our answer, 0.438. So that's one of them. Okay. And then the other one, if we did the same things, we'd get 4.56. Right. So we have both answers there using the calc feature on our calculator. All right, so see if you can do that for 4, A, B, and C. Follow the steps on your calculator to get your answers. All right, and lastly, let's do the real world connection here. So. We have a golden rectangle problem, and what we have here, looking at the end, is the ratio of the longer side to the shorter side of the big rectangle, so the rectangle A. The long side is x, the short side of the big rectangle A is 1, and the ratio of that to the rectangle B. The long side is 1, the short side is x minus 1. So this problem says set that up and see if we can solve and if we do, we'll have the golden ratio. All right, so we need to cross multiply. So we'll have x times x minus 1 equals 1. We've got x squared minus x equals 1, just distributing the x in here. 
And let's minus that 1 over. So we have x squared minus x minus 1 equals 0. All right, this does factor. It turns into x and x, 1 and 1. We need 1 to be positive and 1 to be negative. Does that work? Nope, that does not factor. I apologize. That will give me back to 0. All right, it doesn't factor. So what do we need to do? To the graphing calculator we go. Let's plug this in. x squared minus x minus 1. And we'll go ahead and graph that. And on this one, we really only want the positive answer. So I'm just going to go and find the 0 for the positive answer. So a little bit to the left, right about there. A little bit to the right, and then right on. And 1.618 is our answer. All right. So last one here. See if you can put these in your calculator and solve. All right. Any questions, make sure to ask in class. And good luck with these problems.